How's it going, guys? Welcome to the Piggy Bank Podcast, your favorite casual gaming podcast that we record here every week here on the twitch.tv forward slash two penny games every Monday uh, every, at around three to four o'clock centrals when we start. Uh, and, you know, you can join us on stream and we record all of our shows. Um, you know, we, we usually start with Piggy Bank, then we'll go to two penny games with the boys, try to do the news. Um, and if we have a review, we'll record a review also. Uh, of course, you're going to be, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, it'll be, it's now Saturday, uh, you know, so six days in the future for us. Um, and you can check out all of our description, blah, 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 links in the description below. Uh, please go ahead and give this video a like if you like our, what we're talking about. We're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to have some good mini games, some good gaming discussion. That's kind of what we do on this podcast. We kind of just come together uh, from our weeks in games and we talk about what we're excited about coming out, uh, what we're excited about playing, what we are playing, uh, and we play some mini games and we have some fun. I, of course, am not alone. Uh, Phil, myself, the host of the show. I'm also here with my good friends, one of them being Connor Elliott. What's poppin', players? Welcome back to the Two Penny Games Cat. Nope. No? Wrong one. Very Damn. wrong. Uh, my name's Connor. Piggy Bank. Not even mm-hmm. close. And then right across the table from him, we that have Kevin Bothell. What's poppin', players? How are we doing today? Pretty good. I'm pretty good, good Kevin. How are you guys doing? Doing well. I feel like I wasted my time today. I don't know what it is exactly, I've, but you know how you just... I have so much think, more room on my desk. Did nothing useful today. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You got a new show? You did nothing useful at all? Nothing no. useful. Nothing. Waste of time. That's what I was. That's what I was just saying. So well, just a, somebody, somebody wasted my time a little bit, you know. <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Just it's a not bit, just a little bit, but it's okay. I for, I forgive them because uh, I love them. Anyway, mm-hmm. boys, we've been playing anything fun recently? I know. I mean, I've been playing Doom for. Uh, that's what we're doing for the game club now. Yeah. Yeah, big, Instead big, of, uh, uh, big heads up, we, big uh, we could public not play that fucking uh, RPG Connor wanted us to play. Yeah, Just big uh, pu- public service announcement. Our game club, which is our monthly video game book club that we do, uh, where we can select a game or have a wheel select a game for us. We play video games of yore. We review them at the beginning of every month and then rank them amongst the other games in the series. Connor, uh, it was his choice to uh, uh, pick the game that we play for this month. And he had picked, uh, what is it called? Dark Messiah uh, of Might and Magic. Might and Magic, yeah. Yeah, terrible name. Um, no, and uh, it didn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work on Steam. It doesn't work on, well, it, got, it worked for Connor somehow. It worked for Connor. So Connor played like the opening two hours. And I was like, man, it doesn't work. And I can't get it to work. We did the troubleshooting. We, did, we talked to a bunch of people. We followed all their advice so many so many reddit threads so many steam page threads none of it worked we tried finding the game on alternate alternate uh alternate means of of playing the game and uh those, xbox 360 those didn't work either and uh you know so now we gotta we gotta do a hard pivot so now we're playing 2016's doom developed by id software uh which i'm personally much more excited about i've uh, never played doom all the way through so i was uh, by bethesda bethesda made by id yeah, I've played Maybe it software. twice before, um, and I have the platinum in it. Funny enough, Phil, I, like the the game is supposed to be about like twelve and a half hours long, mm-hmm. something like that. My mm-hmm. clock, granted, it's a PlayStation Four timer before they started doing timers, so those timers are usually inaccurate. Uh, my PlayStation clock reads at eighty three hours <laughs> played in Doom One. That That's doesn't wild. sound right. That I shouldn't be above fifty hours in that. It does take a while to platinum it. Um, but it doesn't take that long. So I don't know what's up with that, that clock. That clock can't be right. But yeah, we've all been playing that, uh, more or less. But the big thing that we've been playing, that all of us have been playing, we've been playing the Concord beta. Uh, we each jumped yeah. into that. Uh, we all put varying amounts of hours into it. Connor, I believe I played the most with you. I think you, what, wait, wait, like two, three hours? Three hours. Yeah. yeah. Phil, Phil, you played with me for about an hour and a half two hours somewhere around there because we we played real late uh at night and then we went to bed um yeah and then it was I, like i think we started at like 1 30 in the morning yeah and then i played about six or seven hours total um which i think is a fair amount to at least get the grip of what's going on in in that beta and what's going on um gentlemen we played concord we played the beta how are we feeling yeah. about it it has fun game fun. yeah yeah Overall, pretty fun is what I would say. It, it feels really good. 
Uh, shooting feels really good. Uh, movement is really good. Uh, I think, I mean, we can we can really get into it, but I, I mean, it's just it's mostly just hard figuring all the characters out because there's yes. not really like a good place to go and try everything out other than just like hopping into a game and trying a different character. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a lot of the the menuing could be a little clearer in terms of like what type of character this is, uh, what their purpose of and like the team is. You know, there's not really that like team composition aspect of it as, as there are in other hero shooters there like, there is you know, but Overwatch there isn't and... like it can you can kind of build a bit of a team comp and it might help out a little bit with balancing but a lot of it just kind of comes down to player skill and how comfortable you are in that character and uh and, and how you outplay the other characters um which i kind of like i kind of like that every character can do damage every character can get kills every character can stand on their own. You can get kill streaks with with pretty much any character. I agree with you, Phil. I think the shooting feels fantastic in this game. This is one of the best feeling shooters I've played in a while. You can tell that there's ex bungee devs on this team. <laughs> yes, like you can feel it so. in the gameplay, in the movement as well, not just the gunplay. Yeah, I really like how everything feels. I really like movement in this game. I love. Uh, uh, the variety of how characters feel when you play them. The heavier characters feel heavier. The lighter characters feel lighter. Um, and then I like, I pretty much like all the gunplay for all of all of the different weapons, of which there's a pretty wide variety of them. Um, and they all feel pretty good to play. I love the abilities. I like all of the characters that I played as. I found favorites uh, fairly quickly, but I do agree with you, Phil. Um, there needs to be a training mode of some kind where I can go in, play around, figure out how these characters work, what their abilities do. There needs to be an easier way to read uh, what they do. It, it, it's too difficult to get to certain sub-menus, like um, pulling up character information and what their abilities do. Pulling up the scoreboard is, is like really circumstantial, at least in this beta. You have to be in-game, already spawned, and then press, uh, I think it's up on the D-pad, to get it, it's to up pull or down. Up. I don't yeah, like. it's up or down on the D pad. That's a terrible choice. That needs to change to the touchpad or select button, whatever controller you're using. It needs to change to that, and it needs to be able to pull up no matter what I'm doing. Um, not being able to pull it up in the character select after you die is weird. And you saying all of that stuff really points out the the biggest criticism of it, which is kind of the systems like that, yeah. including things like the maps. There weren't that many. I was waiting. For there be more diversity, it's a beta. Really, yeah, but that's that's the question. There's two. What is, there was what three maps? Two yeah. three maps. Yeah, that's fine. Which is why you can't exactly get a, a full grasp on a game just on the beta alone. Since is it a beta that shows all of the functions in the game is going to have day one, or is it leaving out some stuff? I don't know. As far as I well, know, it's they clearly have clear leaving out some stuff. There's a game mode that they didn't they didn't give us that clearly is there. Uh, there there's I I assume there's more maps to be played. Uh, in all of those things. You and would then, think. And then there was some other stuff that was locked out. But these games can come out half-baked. You know, these have industry veterans at the head of it, so I, I doubt that it is going to have that problem. But without any of that specific clarification, I'm, you know, still waiting for what it's going to be like on release day. And, and you know what? I'm going to hop off of that. And I think that, that brings us pretty easily into our next talking point of, is this game worth $40? You, you have a concern that it may come out half-baked, this beta uh, killed any of those concerns for me. This game feels pretty polished. There's still some tweaks that need to be done, and, in, and the game releases in a month, so there's still time to do it. Um, there needs to be uh, a few things added, like a training mode, like some of the menu things we were talking about. Uh, characters need more voice lines when mm -hmm. you select them. Hearing the, uh, the same voice yeah. line from my character over and over and over again gets very old very fast. It's very grating, for sure. But... This beta kind of sold me on the game a little bit. I think it's fun. I think it's... I, I, I want to play more. I'm itching to play more. I, I'm i more than willing to throw down $40 uh, on Concord and play it day one. Which is kind of the issue because will other people? Because yeah. as good as the game is on its merits, being a live service game, you could play extremely well like this game does. It's no guarantee of success. Yes. And from what we know about right. the numbers so far... People don't really seem to be still that interested. They're not in connecting. It. Yeah, no. it's not connecting, and that's unfortunate because my feeling about it is is 
would it would you get more players interested if it was free to play? Yeah, probably. But yeah. um I'm always of the opinion that usually free to play games don't feel that great to play. There's a couple of exceptions. I look at Apex Legends. Uh, uh feels great to play. I look at games like Valorant. Valorant's free to play, right? Or am I tripping? No, it is. It, it is. Valorant's free, yeah. Yeah. Valorant's free, Overwatch is free. There's a couple of examples of like really good shooters that are free to play. But I feel like the overwhelming majority of them that you find online, on Steam, on the stores and stuff that are free to play don't feel great like this one feels great. Mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. rather pay a little bit of money. Forty dollars isn't full price. It's I think it's a reasonable uh, amount for what seems to be being offered here um, and the level of polish that it has. It feels polished. Could, again, could there be some more? Of course. Uh, but with what I played this weekend, I think this is more than worth $40. But I also, at the same time, fully believe that this game is going to flop day one. And I think there's a number of reasons as to why that is. I don't think they showed it well uh, mm. at any of the PlayStation events. I, I don't care about this semi-focus on story that they're doing let me ask you guys about that do you guys enjoy those cutscenes do you guys care about those cutscenes are you interested to see more of those cutscenes but i like from day one i was like yeah that's not really what i'm like going into this game for yeah i respect the fact that they're doing it yes because you know overwatch that was the big thing people were kind of interested to see going beyond the release date because it did have a lot of style with the characters and how they acted, but it didn't capitalize off that at all. The issue with this one is even though they are capitalizing on having somewhat of a story, the characters themselves don't carry enough weight on their own. They don't look all of that interesting. They don't act particularly interesting or well. Uh, and so you're kind of just left with forgettable characters yeah. besides the fact that they play very well. I, I don't disagree. I think those cutscenes are well made, super well yeah. animated. They look great. Um, but... These characters feel like uh, discount store brand Guardians of the Galaxy characters. Like, yeah. this game cannot shake that. It's so clearly going for that Guardians of the Galaxy feel, but it just feels so generic. Um, and I struggle to remember some of my favorite characters' names sometimes. Uh, there, there are some, like, standouts, of course. Linux, who seems to kind of be, like, the main guy that they're pushing forward. Yeah, that guy's kind of working for me, mm-hmm. right? In terms of a character. Yeah. Um, but... Star Child is very much Drax. Yeah. As far as... Which... I'm fine with it because I like that warrior archetype character, yeah, 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 yeah. but it's so obviously ripping off of... Like, that's the most blatant ripoff, I think, yeah. of a character from Guardians of the Galaxy. I guess Lennox is kind of like... Uh, he's kind of like the the Chris Pratt, Star-Lord character. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But yeah. fun, he's fun enough on his own to where he's... Like, but then you get... Archetype of character. But when you get deeper costume. into the roster, the more and more generic they get. Yeah. Uh, Daw, who's my favorite guy. Daw and Teo damn near exactly the same type of character. One takes himself a little bit more seriously than the other. And you just look at them and you go, ah, it's hard to even remember their names. Th- yeah. This is so generic. Um, I like the presentation of the game in the menus. I like the little like 80s sci-fi styling that they're going for. Again, kind of aping off of that Guardians of the Galaxy feel. It, it works. It just, there's something about character design and writing that isn't punchy enough to where it's just not, that part of the game is not leaving a, a, a very memorable thing. What I do remember, though, is all the fun I'm having while I'm playing the game, which is the important part, is the gameplay. I just feel like for a live service game, they need to be offering more, a better, more flushed out roadmap than, hey, for the first 12 weeks, we're going to have a new cutscene every time you jump into the game. All right, cool, but I kind of don't care. Mm-hmm. I kind of just want to play your game. What are you doing in the gameplay-wise? As, as um, going off of like more gameplay stuff, I think a lot of the like create they have a lot of creativity in terms of like what some of these characters can do. Yes, that I've never really seen in a character action game. Um, like I mean, sure, there's some aspects that you'll see uh, from other things, but like some of the stuff I saw, like there's this character that really comes to mind, Baz, that I uh, mm-hmm. that I know I heard Connor also enjoyed playing, uh, where like she has a thing where you can throw a knife into somebody and then you can like track them for a short amount of time, like through walls. Or like if, if, uh, if you're near a wall, you can crouch and see some people through walls as well. Oh. Um, like it's, it's very, it's very interesting. Like how some of the ideas for these characters, like they have interesting gameplay, like, uh, gimmicks 
you know? Yeah. Um, like there's that one. Uh, another one that comes to mind is the uh, the Teo that uh, he has like a smoke bomb that you can throw down, and if you aim down down side, it's kind of like Glaz from Rainbow Six Siege. You can you can see through the smoke. Yes. Um, that's pretty useful and pretty cool. Um, Lennox has himself a self heal. Yep. They can do um, J- what's his name J- Jabari J- Jabari something name. like that. The guy Jabali. you like Jabali yeah. Yeah. Jabali Jabali very yeah. fun. Uh, he was a very cool like more support uh, theme character. That's I really vibe with Jabali. I liked him a lot. And to um, that, to that these little orbs you can throw at p- people and like heal them or hurt them. Which to that point he's a support character, but he can play you know offense he, on his own. He can get some kills because of his gun and because yeah. of those orbs you were talking about. It. Makes every single character not just really fit into a specific role, yes, but allows you to play the game like everybody else. And they all feel diverse and different. Yeah. You, your play style changes when you do play as other characters. Mm-hmm. They do not all play the same, no. um, right. which is awesome that they 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 struck a balance. All sixteen characters can feel aggressive or supportive if they need to, and uh, all sixteen characters feel different to play. I think that's that that's one of like the best things about the game is again this gameplay loop is awesome. Mm-hmm. It's really really fun. It's really fun to find a character you like or try out a new character and be like, how does this guy work? Oh, this is cool. This mm-hmm. is creative. This is interesting. And then it's diverse enough that to where when you see an enemy player playing that character, you know how to engage against that character now because you know what they do. That is the sign of really good game design. I think the game design in this game is fantastic. It's just the overall package around it has a couple of shortcomings that I would really like to 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 see be punched up a little bit. Uh, right. Do you guys are are you guys willing to spend forty dollars on this game? Yeah, I am. I think, I, I, think I would. Yeah, I I absolutely would too. One hundred percent. It's an easy game to jump in and play. It's yeah. super serviceable to a lot of people. Uh, I will say more in depth on the movement system. It's very cool because you have a slide, a jump, and a dodge. And depending on which character you play, you might have a double jump and uh, you know a single dodge. Everyone, of course, has a slide. Some guys, might... some guys have triple jumps. <laughs> yes, some people have triple jumps. Some yeah. people have you know triple slides. Some people have double slides and uh, maybe no jump at all. There, there's it's a character diverse. when they dodge, they turn invisible. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like fun little passive abilities in there as well. Uh, and yeah, each char- again to the point of each character feels dynamic and unique, um, which is really really great. What are some things we want to see put into the game at launch? We kind of touched on a few of these things already, but let's go ahead and, and, and kind of dive deep into that. First and foremost, I believe there needs to be a training mode. There needs to be a, yeah. some type of mode where you, you drop me into a map, I'm playing as a character, and I get to just kind of play with the abilities, see what they do, see how they function, put a couple of target dummies in there that I can shoot at and, and play with. Um, there needs to be a way where I can test characters out before I jump into uh, a competitive multiplayer environment. Yeah. Um, um, I need to see, I need to see like a good separation for like each of these class, like these classes that they kind of assign yeah. to these characters, you know, like I, I need more of a solid, like, Hey, you can really play whoever you want, but this is, this character is, is more suited to this play style or yeah. that I need those like groups. You know, yeah, like they, how, they, like there needs Overwatch, to be more. Had, like the, go, go ahead. ahead. I was saying Overwatch had had like the DPS, the defense, or, or I think it was assault, defense, uh, tank, and support at launch. Um, now it's just uh, damage, tank, and uh, support. I, we need some kind of separation like that, just to show the dichotomy of like all the different character types there are. Yeah, uh, just an easier way where we can find a play style that we know we already like. I know I like playing as support. Show me which ones are those guys only, so that I can jump to them first. The only caveat is something that I think Overwatch ran into in its later cycle, which was being too focused on which role you're playing because it got to a point where everyone was like, it, it played more like the normal game was the way competitive game would be played. Yeah. And it just felt like it was boring to see the same kind of team comps because he would say, you have to do this role, this role, and this role. Too focused on yeah. on meta. And but, I agree. That's something I like about the game is it's not super yeah. focused on a meta. You can build a team... Excuse me. You can build a team comp, and that can certainly help you in the game. 
but it's not detrimental. You can still win and and play whoever you want while other characters... Like, you don't need to have a tank on your team mm-hmm. to win. You don't need to have a medic on your team to win, uh, which is something I really, really like about the game. Yeah, I want to see... A- I love the, all the health packs around the uh, yep. level. I also like I, which, how they f- I mean, Overwatch had it too, but... I like how they function. Yeah. There, there's, there's a small burst of health when you pick it up, and then there's a delayed increase as, as you keep going. I like that balance. It gives me, as an aggressor, an opportunity. If I see them going for a med pack, sure, they get the extra health right away, but it gives me time as the aggressor to go, oh, no, you don't, and shoot them and, and cancel out their, their healing on that. Um, and I think it works the other way as well, where it's like, okay... I got this quick burst of health. I was close to dying, but so were they. Now I have the edge. Turn around, pop them. They're done. Yeah. You know uh, that. That's that. I like how that functions. That's really cool. It doesn't as easily facilitate running away from firefights just to go get a health pack somewhere. And yeah. I felt like the movement helped allow you to track people down more. Yeah. You know, certain characters, of course, their stick is to escape from combat as efficiently as quickly as possible. Yes. Yeah. Besides those characters, though, if you run. A health kit or enemy, you know, I mean, friendly teammates better be around somewhere to help you out. Otherwise, you'll probably die. That was something I also want to lean on. Not every character is focused on gunplay. Mm -hmm. Uh, You don't need to be the best shot in the world to be successful at this game. The abilities are on quick enough cooldowns or are focused on... Cool, like their cooldowns aren't on timers uh, all the time. Sometimes it's based off of kills. Sometimes you got to go pick up what you threw out. Uh, uh, sometimes you have to go and break whatever you threw out to get it back, uh, or just hold the button to charge it back up. Something like that. Um, I like that balance between gunplay and abilities. I think it's really well balanced. There are characters uh, like Heymara is one of my favorite characters. She's got a cross, an, an explosive crossbow. Uh, it's got one bolt in it. You shoot it, and she has to reload. Now, the reload's not super long, but it's long enough to where it's not the most ideal uh, primary weapon, right? But you match that with um, her fire abilities and her blinding ability, and suddenly she becomes really dominant on the field. She can really do a lot of crowd control. She can do a lot of AoE damage to kind of counteract the the steady DPS that a tail might have. And you can still come out on top on those things if you lean more on the abilities than you do the gunplay. I enjoy the I, I really enjoy the diversity there. One other thing I I really want to see it launch, and it's possible I just got a bad impression on it because it's the the beta. There needs to be a clearer path of progression, and I need to know what will get me different unlocks for the characters I like. As of right now, I don't understand why I'm leveling up characters. That that wasn't clear to me. Why is my Heymara getting to level 4, level 5, level 6? And, but I'm getting a duplicate Linux, even though I didn't play Linux that much. Um, why is that happening, you know? Um, and then on top of that, I need to figure out the best way to get cosmetics for the characters I like. Just having it, it seems like it's just based off of your overall level, and they're slowly doling out simple um, color changes that's not enough. We there needs to be an easier way to find out the things I like and how I can get to them. Especially when your characters don't look all that great. I think you need kind of more wide sweeping changes to your character's cosmetic look. Yeah. Than what they've been giving. Color swaps so far. aren't enough. Give me different there, costumes. No. Give me yeah. different skins. Uh, uh, stuff like that. Because yeah, the the first unlock you get for Star Child is him but green, mm-hmm. and it looks ugly. It looks absolutely disgusting. It, it's so bad. Um, and so, yeah, we need to just, there just needs to be clearer menuing or a clearer path of progression. Right now, I don't understand how I'm getting these unlocks and, and, and what I'm doing to get them. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I really want to see that happen at launch. Hopefully they can kind of clear that out and finish it up. Is there anything else, guys, we want to throw out there before we move on I from that? I think that's good. Yeah. I think so. Uh, I'm officially excited for Concord. Yeah. Concord, I'm, yeah. Play I'm, the beta. I, I want to play it. I want to play. We well, can't play the beta because it's well. The beta is done. Yeah, but I want to play more. For content. now, I think the beta will ha- pop you, up again. I you think we're getting another one. I think so. The we're big only, thing oh, we're only we a month away from launch. We are no, no we yeah, sorry. End of July twenty first. Yeah. Uh, but see, that's the th- I guess that's the last point I'll make. The thing that they really need to do is not have technical issues on launch day. Yeah, it's this is a game that doesn't really have the leeway to afford that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think an open beta, another beta, would be just another nice test. Before you go into the, roots. I don't think this will happen, but um, you can't 
your servers cannot be easily overloaded like, say, a Helldivers 2. No. Now, the difference in Helldivers 2 is that it was so successful they weren't expecting that. I think the opposite is true here where they, they do not seem to be having a lot a great uh, uh, player base uh, coming forward on this. You know, we saw the numbers on Steam. It didn't seem like the action on PlayStation 5 was that crazy. Sometimes it did take a little bit to find a game. It took, mm-hmm. it took you know, a minute or two to find a game sometimes. I saw some people online. It was taking them so long to find a game that the matchmaking just canceled itself out. And it, yeah, it just timed out. And I go, uh-oh, <laughs> that's not good. That's potentially because they turned off crossplay, which if they did, it's still not good. But I guess that could be a reason why. They didn't turn off crossplay. Oh, you play. mean the player turned yeah. off crossplay. Oh, okay, got you. That, there's a potential of that as well. We, we, it's funny, that same problem that we had, mm-hmm. Connor, where like, you, I, I played the most, so I was the highest level, and there is a set of progression of game modes, and they introduced game modes to that. So I, Connor jumped in with me first, and I was like, here, you be party leader so that you can get that progression of game modes easily. And uh, it wouldn't let us play because it said one or more players has crossplay turned off. That was not the case. Mm-hmm. It did let us play if I was party leader. Same thing happened with, and to be clear, I played on PlayStation 5. Phil played on PlayStation 5. Connor played on PC. Um, me and Phil jumped in together, had the same problem, mm-hmm. even though we were both on PC. Or, I'm sorry, both oh, on PlayStation, PlayStation 5. Nice. Um, and so that's a weird bug in the glitch in the system. Not the biggest thing in the world. But it's why I think another beta is proper. Pro- yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We, maybe we need to work out some kinks. Do we think this game gets delayed? I don't think so. I yeah, don't think so either. I don't. I think getting the game out and then building on top of that is better than delaying something like this, a live service game. I think so too. That's I, how you get feedback. Yeah, player feedback is more important than whatever internal stuff they got. Now, if it if it comes out or when it comes out, and if it doesn't hit standards, do we see PlayStation commit? They don't really, we don't know their expectation right now. So yeah. it's hard to say. I mean, you would think with their big new studio being Firewalk, they'd want to. Yeah. But let's give said- these guys the best chance in the world that we can. Ideally, Helldivers 2 bought you some, bought you some runway, right? Yeah, like, right. ideally, you, you can allow Concord to not be great at launch. Maybe it'll be great in six months. Mm-hmm. Maybe it'll build up a, a, a player base that wasn't there at launch but got there eventually. You know, I, I, I hope they I commit. don't even think it'll take that long. I don't even think it'll take, it'll take six months. It might I, not. Don't even, I don't even know if it'll happen at this point with how the internet is talking about this game. Mm. But also, final point for me, nobody talked to the degree they did about Helldivers 2 until it came out. And all of a sudden, word of mouth, who knows what, it just blew up more than anybody you're expected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen point. here in terms of like taking the world by storm, but it might make it a successful game at least. Yeah. I, I think people are still people are still fighting the kind of like bad taste in their mouth that they got from the initial uh state of play mm-hmm. where like yeah they were they were still it was still unclear what type of game concord was and then it's like oh it's another 5v5 character shooter yeah yep. you know when when playstation is known for their single player stuff that's where the single player crowd goes mm-hmm. um yeah i think the internet is being unfair to this game i think i think i hey if you have doubts about concord give it a try give it a shot uh because it is a lot of fun I think I think people should definitely give it a chance. I I think out of the three of us, I'm I maybe well, I don't know. Connor might have been more than me, but I think I was like looking forward to this the least. Um, so yeah, I, maybe, I, maybe maybe Connor had me beat, but I, I don't know. It, no, I, I, I turned around on it. So when it when it showed his gameplay, I liked what I saw, but my issues were still the reception. So yeah, you know, I was still like surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Me but too. I gave. A little bit of leeway. I, I think, what did I, what did I say in the game's cast after? I said, Concord looks like it's not doing anything wrong, but it's not looking like it does anything exceptional. Yeah. And I am getting that temperature check from some people who did play the beta of like, it's good, but it's not great, and I need something great for it to have my attention. That's a fair, that's a fair thing to say. But I think this game yeah. is, I think, it, I think it looks like it's shaping up to be great, personally. Um, it has potential. Yeah, it definitely has a lot of potential. So I hope I hope it's given a chance because this game is a lot of fun to play. Yeah. Hey, yo, dude, y'all ever play Wrestling Empire? No. Unless you that guys did. Like Thirty minutes ago. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Thirty minutes. It was fifteen. Not even. Well, you know. we responded. Yeah, that's what matters. Anyway, what that is. Boys, we like to 
play mini games here on the show. Indeed. And this week, I'd like to go first, and I have for us a um, I don't remember what we like. We have a it's like a this or that essentially, um, where you know you guys are gonna tell me. I mean, this this is where like ideally I brought up the the point uh, in our Discord of like getting whiteboards, hmm. and you know like it's kind of like how we have to lock mm. in for guesses and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's essentially like. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a list of items, and you have to tell me whether it's this or it's that. In this case, this week, um, I've assembled a list of Pokemon games, and you have to tell me whether they're real or fake. Okay, I think I can win this. I I feel like it, but there's a lot of random Pokemon things out there. That's what Indeed. we'll uh, he'll go he'll try and get. Yeah. you know, he'll start with something he'll start off with something easy, and then he'll go to something ridiculous. Pokemon right. Za. Yes. That's, no, that's not real. I, I mean, it is real. It's coming that, out next that year. That is real. It's coming out next year. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe I'm not going to be as good at Z this. Z to though. A, I'm pretty sure is what it's is Pokemon what it is, Za. We on that Za, boy. Oh, so it's not actually called Za. No, it's, no it, is, it is Z dash A. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Za. No, the dash does not make it Za. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the new Legends game. It's the sequel to mm. Legends Arceus that came yeah. out a couple years ago. Mm, that's right. Legends. Uh, but anyway, yeah, yes. uh, you boys ready? We're going to go back and forth on this list of Pokemon got games it. and you have to tell me whether it's real or fake. Sure. I got it. Come on. I got it. All right. So first game I've got, Hey You Pikachu. This is, uh, I'm going to give you a little description of the game as well, before, if, it'll, if it'll help you decide if it's real or fake. Um, this is a game for the Nintendo 64 in which you had a little microphone attachment, put it onto your controller and you could talk to Pikachu. I'm locked in. So am I. All right. Is this real or fake? He's going first. This is a real game. Yeah, Connor? it's a real game. It is a real game. I, I didn't know if it was. I didn't know it was for the Nintendo 64 though. I thought yeah, it was more. It was for the. That. It was for the Nintendo 64. Oh. Old game. Ah. Oh. It wasn't even. It didn't even really work that well, did it? Uh, it wasn't ideal. Yeah. Uh, Pikachu didn't always understand what you were saying. Bring it back. But, you know, no, don't. bring it back. You don't need to bring that back. <laughs> um, all right. So that's that's one one to one there. Where's uh, my Hey up, You Pikachu uh, remake? We've got we've got Pikachu Nowhere. teaches typing. This of course is a uh, browser game where you, you have your, your you keyboard and you teach your kids how to how to type on the computer with the help of Pikachu, their cuddly furry yellow friend. Are we locked in? The the thing about this is is I if this is real, I don't I don't know if it's Pikachu. It could be somebody else who's doing it. Mm -hmm. You know. But I'm locked in. Pikachu's so your mine. mascot. Yeah. If, I don't know who else you would pick. Uh, well, Connor, tell me, is this game real or fake? I think it is real. I also think Seven? it's real. You're both incorrect. It is fake. Damn, tough. Damn, real tough. There that was very... there was a Pokemon typing game. But it wasn't Pikachu teaches typing. I believe it was Pokemon Typing Adventure, is what it was called. See, I I, I was I was sitting there. I was like, I'm pretty sure there is a Pokemon Typing game, but it's not a Pikachu fo focused one. Hmm. Technicalities. But that's the thing. Like, I don't know why it wouldn't be Pikachu. You know, I don't know. I don't know why they didn't just have more Pokemon there. for more and spelling. Like, Sometimes I want have, have like, to have teach like a little me. Um, mm -hmm. on your screen. Have like a little model of the keyboard, and like Pikachu is maybe stepping on the keys to like type stuff out you know sure but you could also if you have more pokemon if you have all of pokemon involved now those are your spelling challenges is here here's mm. you know charizard spell it da, 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 da. you know it's having spell charizard c-h-a-r-i-z-a-r-d you're correct yeah very good charizard's yeah. not, not a hard one mm -hmm. it's an easy one all right i knew that next up we've got pokemon 3d dark <laughs> rising this, of course, is a <laughs> what? This is a, a 3D adventure on the on the Nintendo 3DS, uh, where you have to stop this dark energy from corrupting Pokemon as your player character. I've got zero idea. Well, you were you're locked in though, right? Yeah, sure. I am too. Okay. This game wow. real or fake? Fake. It's real. Well. Connor, unfortunately, this game's fake. Ah, 
Tough. Thought I heard something about that game. Tough. Real uh, tough. No, Pokemon you're thinking, 3D, what, what, too You're thinking of Pokemon, X, uh, Pokemon Coliseum XD Gale of Darkness. Oh, that's the Gale of Darkness uh, plot. I should have fucking... Uh, see, I knew that. Uh, he got you. Yeah. He got you. He only got me. Next up... Spencer would be upset. We've got, next up, we've got Pokemon Conquest. This, of course, Shit. is a tactics RPG with a Pokemon skin. I believe it's uh it's based off of fuck Lord of the Rings Conquest. The no, I forgot the name of the the uh like I had I had the thing it's based off of earlier, but I, I don't remember. Why'd you bring that up? I miss it. When are good, we getting another one of those? Good for you. They had to waste their time on a generic ass boring Marvel game. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah. That game should have been cooler than it was. I'm putting it out there, you know? No. Stop taking these studios who do one type of game very, very well and make them do something else, you know? But Marvel's... I want a division in Star Wars. Why am I not getting that? You got Star Wars Outlaws. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want Star Wars Outlaws. I want division in Star Wars. Eh, right, well, complain, Pokemon complain. Conquest, boys, is a real effect. No, I'm locking I'm in. I'm locked in, too, which yeah. should be me first, I believe. Yeah. I'm... Going to say that's real. And Tevin? I was also going real. It is real. Hey. Mm -hmm. It is a uh, tactical RPG. Uh, I believe it's it's a cross between Pokemon uh, Pokemon and Nobunaga's Ambition. <laughs> that's I funny. don't know what that is. Uh, Nobunaga's Ambition is a Japanese tactical RPG game series. Oh, nice. The funny thing is, is when you said that, I th think that gave me a like idea of seeing this game before but i don't know well but I, I i said it was based on another tactics rpg but i didn't tell you what it was hmm. all right i'm down um one. you are down moving one. on to the next game uh i believe right now the score is tavin has three to connor's two indeed next we have pokemon battle revolution <laughs> this is of course a battle simulator for the nintendo wii Mm. Fuck. Um, all right, I'm locked in. Hmm. I'm not. Uh, I think I think there's a fact here that I'm gonna capitalize on that I know in my head. Hmm. Name the game again. Battle Pokemon Revolution. Battle Revolution. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm locked in. Simulator for the Nintendo Wii. I'm locked in. Tavern? All right, well, Tavern, is this game real or fake? I believe this is a fake game. Mm -hmm. I think it's fake as well. I think it's based off something else. Or you're both incorrect. This is a real game. Damn it. I thought I thought um, there had not been a Pokemon game on a, uh, a, a home console since the GameCube until Switch. Nope. Now, I thought Pokemon a, skipped the there was a po entirely. Pokemon Battle Revolution was, I believe, part of the fourth generation of Pokemon games. Uh, Diamond and Pearl. On I can I can see the box. I I owned this game at some point. Um, it was like Pokemon Coliseum, uh, or not Coliseum, Pokemon Stadium, um, but well, updated for the Nintendo Wii graphically, and you could transfer your Pokemon from Diamond and Pearl into the game. Hmm. I thought you were referencing another game, but you were doing the thing with Gale of Darkness, where it was the fake part of that game, mm. not the real one. Mm. Damn. Oh, well. I thought they skipped well, the yeah. Wii's. Mm. Uh, they were on there. Mm. Next up, we've got Poke Park Wii Pikachu's Adventure, uh, where this is a uh, third-person kind of adventure game where you're Pikachu and you're going through and you're making friends with all these Pokemon and you're you're trying to explore. And I believe, um, I believe you have to rescue Mew, mm. is the the, uh, the the crux of this game. Hmm. I'm locked in. I'm going as well. Yeah, locked in. It's my turn. Right. I'm going to say... Well, is this game real or fake? I'm going to say it's real. I think Tavin? that elevator pitch was a, was a crock of shit. I'm going to say it's fake. Well, Connor, congratulations. This game is real. Fuck. Yes, there we go. Narrowed away that... It, didn't say, it, didn't um, say, it sounded too complicated. It, 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 with the title, Poke mm -hmm. Park, that should be, mm -hmm. that should be like, a, like a Pokemon or running in an amusement park or something. You know? Guess it's not. No, it's not an amusement park, but it's, it's more like a, uh, like a nature preserve. Hmm. 
I'll take that. Uh, but yeah, you play. Why are we Pikachu saving you Mewtwo? Cool Why is there saving of anybody? Because I don't know. But it's another one for the Wii. Because you're saving uh, him. Next up, we've got Magikarp Jump. Um, <laughs> this, of course, is a mobile game in which you raise your Magikarp up to be the highest jumping Magikarp that ever lived. Hmm. hmm. I'm locked in. So am I. Yeah. Well, uh, Connor, oh, sorry, Tavin, is this game real or fake? I'm going to say this is real. Yeah. This is totally this a is, fun game. This is indeed a real game. Yeah. yeah. Of course it is. Well, I thought it was going to be like a Flappy Bird copy. No. Um, that would make sense. So, I mm -hmm. mean, there, there is like a kind of like charge up mechanic where I think you tap the screen to like make him like jump higher. Uh, but it's almost like a, um, you know, those like browser like fish aquarium games. You have like your Magikarp in a little aquarium. You can like take care of it and like level them up and stuff. And then you enter him. You enter him in jumping competitions. Pokemon games can really be as shilly as possible, can't they? Yeah, of course they can. Yeah. Why not? Next up, we've got Pokemon Adventure Two Battle. Pokemon Adventure Two Battle. Mm -hmm. I'm locked in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm locked in, sure. All right. Well, Connor, is this game real or fake? Oh, it's my turn. You see, I really want to say fake. Yeah? I really, really want to. But I'm going to say fake. Yeah, I'll say fake. Evan? Uh, I was also going to go fake. It is fake. In, in oh, fact, I just replaced the word Sonic with Pokemon. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Battle was the thing. Battles in there? Battle. Why is horrible, battle in horrible there? Horrible thing to put in there. I don't know. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is the name of uh, Sonic Adventure 2. I feel like naming video games should be really fucking easy, but sometimes they make it seem like it's the hardest thing in the world. <laughs> you can do so many more interesting words than battle. Even like... Well, it's because there was there was like a party like battle like mini game uh, multiplayer thing that you could that you could do, like uh, plugging in multiple controllers and play like that. Even the, but like, even like the Jedi games. Jedi Fallen Order to Jedi Survivor. Eh. Yeah. You know, that's giving you, that's giving you the player an impression that this game is doing something that it's not. You're surviving in yeah, both I, games. I think, I think Metal Gear Survive or like, you know, any of those like survival type games. Why did, more he go, why did he go to Metal Gear Survive first? Because you're talking it was about the first one that popped in my mind because we talked about it on the podcast before. Random. <laughs> you don't think about that game, Metal Gear Survive. I mean, also, yeah. I, I, the Never. most recent video I've been the most recent video I've been like putting together and editing is your top ten worst like video games uh, thing, mm -hmm. and I brought up Metal Gear Survive in that one. So hadn't played it. Probably would be on that list. Haven't played it. Good for you. Are you, are you bastard? You, like, here's the thing. We're working our way through Metal Gear on Game Club, right? Spoilers, probably the next time I get to choose, if the wheel doesn't choose it for me, it's going to be MGS2. I'm going to do this all the way up until at least four, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Rising Revengeance is probably going to be after that. Maybe not by me, probably by you or something like that. You know what I mean? At some point, one of you fuckers is going to want to troll me and make me play Metal Gear Survive. No, because no. I don't want to subject myself to that. Ah, I but barely... you want to subject yourself to fucking Sonic Adventure? Because it's a game from my childhood that I want to revisit? It's also awful. Well, both games are probably short. Well, no. It survives probably Adventure longer. Survives short. probably longer. Yeah. Adventure's pretty short. Adventure's short. Well, all I know is the only one I don't really want to play, which is possible, which is going to happen, is Phantom Pain again. You don't want to play that? I have no desire to go back to it. Really? Yeah. Every time I go back to it, once I get past the intro, the intro is the hardest part, but once ah. I get past that intro, that gameplay loop is mm -hmm. really fun. Maybe it will be. Yeah. All right. And we're back. <laughs> we got Pokemon. Next game. We got Pokemon Rumble. This is a, um, it's for, I believe it was for the Wii and for the uh, 3DS where you have these little wind up toys and you put them in the arena and they have to rumble and fight each other. How did you wind them and up? They're, they're Pokemon. Uh, with the stylus slash Wii remote. Locked in. I'm also locked in. All right. Well, Connor, is this game real or fake? It's real, oh, no, I say. Okay. And Tad, go ahead. Uh, I believe it is fake. 
It is a real game. Fuck. There we go. Okay. Connor, come on. Keep going. The Wii keeps keeps throwing me off. A game called uh, uh, Pokemon Rumble. That makes me think it's like, oh, this is like the first time we put Rumble in the controllers and the, and the Rumble is a mechanic. So, yeah. like, this has to be like an N64 game or something like that. And you use a Rumble pack or something. Not so. Uh, I've, 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 I've lost track of the scores, but I think Connor might be ahead. Connor's ahead by, by one. one. Yeah. Because yeah. I tied it up and then this yeah, 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 got yeah. me one. Yeah. Head. Oh, shit. All right. Well, how many more of these do we have? We have one more. Oh, okay. Okay. This is the last one. All right, I'm locked away from getting a loss. Can I win? And we've them? got Pokemon Ranger for the Nintendo DS, uh, where instead of a trainer, you're a Pokemon Ranger, almost like a park ranger, and you're trying to pre uh, preserve the environment that these Pokemon are in and save them from uh, these polluters and poachers. I'm locked in. So am I. <laughs> well, Tavin, <laughs> is this game real or fake? I believe this game is real. I am not piggybacking. I swear to God. You're, I am you, not. I you're am fucking not. kneeling the ball. I am not. You're no, kneeling no, no, the ball. No, 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 no. You're no. kneeling no, the no. ball. Here's the thing. I was prepared for you to say fake and say, oh, I got to fight against the urge and say real. But you said real. I'm not bullshitting. And I'm not going to choose the opposite for your sake. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. Because you know, you know it's real? I have no goddamn clue. Oh, okay. I have no clue at all. <laughs> so, wait, you said it's real? Yeah. Well, congratulations, Connor. It is a real game. Yeah, uh, there we go. I had this. I think this is the first like non-series Pokemon, like non-main series Pokemon game I ever played, and it wasn't either hmm. the three, not for the three DS, but the the DS. Pretty fun game. I think they should remake it. Oh, that's not true. I played Mystery. Yeah, Games they don't. Before, yes, Down's shaking before, his head. Uh, Ranger, they but no, they they should they should remake Pokemon Ranger. I, I stand by that. You know, I won this, but I know Tavin in his heart of heart, a part of him thinks. Connor's lying. Connor just changed it to whatever I thought. Connor, Some part of him is. Connor. I know that. I don't care. You should care. <laughs> no, you should. This is about principles. Phil, this is all to say, Phil's point about the whiteboards is making sense to me now. I think we Are should. We, I think we should. No, I, I, I almost got one on Prime Day. I just, I got my shelf and my monitor stand instead. You didn't get a fucking whiteboard on Prime Day? The fuck is wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, man. You it had this idea and you didn't so. capitalize off of it? On the best day of deals in the United States of America? Well, neither did y'all. This, this year they had Megan Thee Stallion promoting it, so. Did you know that this year they had Megan Thee Stallion promoting it? I did not know. Hi, Meg. Shut up. <laughs> Freak. <laughs> you got a girlfriend. Shut up. <laughs> I love her very much. I, you do like her music. I mean, my I girlfriend. Nicole, Nicole, uh, would, Nicole would be flirting with Meg, too, so come in. I mean, it's Meg. The Stallion. She's a woman. She Stallion's is. a man. He's an insanely attractive. No, Stallion woman. is Stallion is Houston slang. No, it is not. It is. No, it is not. 100 Stallion is. is a type of fucking to horse. Be, no, yeah, yes, you're right. Yeah, and it that's is a what, category of horse. Yeah. yeah, but Stallion to be a Stallion, it's a tall woman. Yeah, don't correct me. By the way, Tavin, you get that? That's true. I get it. Don't correct me as if though. Well, actually, Connor, you're wrong in a sense. I'm not wrong. But you try to make it out like it was something. It's, it's not. Hmm? You try to make it out like it's something that it, that it's not. That's not why she calls. She doesn't call herself Meg the Stallion because she likes horses. She calls herself Meg the Stallion because she's tall as hell. For a bad bitch with with body, and it's been around for decades. Yeah, no, that's it's good to know. You nerds, stay exposing yourselves is what this tweet says. That's funny. I did expose myself as a nerd many times before this. Guys, I think good it's game. time for me to come out. Yeah. What? Gamer. As a what gamer? I'm a gamer. Oh, okay. Good for you. <laughs> Thanks for closet. complimenting my bravery. <laughs> nah, you're still in the closet. We know what you actually wanted to say. I'm a closeted gamer. <laughs> gamer. Uh, I understand. I said gamer. I, yeah, we know what the joke is. Connor, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on. Connor, what do you have for us this week, buddy? I got a classic. A simple game. I'm a simple man. Metabat. Simple game. Basically, what I do is I take two games, both on Metacritic... Uh, just now realizing that I should probably go in and choose the system where it is most highly rated and compare it against another game, and then you got to guess which one is higher. Sometimes it's all based right. off user score. Sometimes, pretty much all the time, is the critic score. Today is just mm -hmm. the critic score. So it's pretty hard until you until you decide to change your mind later. Until I decide to change my mind later, yes. But you guys ready? You guys, you guys know the rules. Everyone else watching, you probably know the rules. It's 
just pretty simple. Well, I mean, you just explained the rules. We, we, we lock in honorably, yeah. and we, we say which one we think scored higher. I always feel like I missed something. Like, there's some element I didn't say, even with a simple game like this. But all right. What is, what is Tavin doing on his phone? Wasting his time. I'm, do- I'm be, double-checking information texting? for my video game. Mm, I see, my I mini game. Texting? On the podcast. Shame, shame, shame. All right. First two games. We're playing one right now. Doom 2016. Mm -hmm. Specifically for the Xbox One. Okay. Going up against the PC version of Wolfenstein The New Order. Return of first-person shooters. Both made a good splash, but which one was rated Both around the same time, because Wolfenstein is, what, 2017? Fuck. I I, I think you're right about that. Yeah, I uh, was Wait, was it... was? Wolfenstein New Order 2017, or is that uh, New Colossus? You know what? 2014. You're, you're right. New Colossus was 2017 because it came out the same year as Mario. You're mm-hmm. right. I forgot about that. 2014. Gotcha. So yeah, tw- 2014's Wolfenstein New Order versus Doom 2016. That one's pretty tough. I'm not going to lie. Those are both pretty high-quality games. I'm locked in. They, But they both excel in different ways. They, in fact, do. Phil's locked in. I'm going to lock in as well. Okay. Both. Well, Tavin, you go first. I'm locking in with my heart of hearts, right? The one that I, I just believe to be the better game. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just think it's better crafted in pretty much every way. Uh, and I'm going to go Doom 2016. I was also going to say Doom 2016. Yeah. Well, guys, unfortunately, you both won a point. No, oh, It is, not. in fact, Doom. Uh, Less of a gap. Wolfenstein, great. More though. of a gap, I should say. Everybody that, go play Wolfenstein if you haven't played Wolfenstein. Those are both excellent not- games. Yes, I don't actually don't have the user score on hand because I clicked on something wrong and blah, blah, blah. The critic score for Doom sits at an 87 mm-hmm. to Wolfenstein The New Order's 81. A lot of them were in the 70s, like high 70s. And oh. yeah, it's very strange to me huh. in terms of quality. It's a kind I mean, of I kind of get it. Like Wolfenstein isn't the best playing game in the world, um, but it's good. And it's got one hell of a narrative. Mm-hmm. Good narrative. Uh, those thing. games have phenomenal narratives. You wouldn't I, think I'm well live on the podcast. I'm going to order a whiteboard for myself. Hey, there we go. We're out here buying all these lighting equipments, making it look nice. He can't. He can't even chip in the f- like twelve extra bucks to buy us whiteboards. Damn, it doesn't make him look nicer. Jeez. That's why. That's why he's doing it. Thanks for the lights, by the way, Connor. They look great. Yeah, they do look great. It looks great because one light, one big one. Well, look, these guys. Oh yeah, those ones as well. I think about. I think yeah, three. Nice. Anyways. All right. Both scored. Both of you better not score on this next one. Great games. I kept. I, I clicked on it because the when you click on Metacritic and you try to choose looking at scores of other games, it doesn't add the. Uh, well, at least I didn't scroll down to it. Adds the user score. I want the user score, but unfortunately, again, I don't know why you guys are not prepping better and just write the information down in your phone. Because like, I just take a picture open, of it. Open your notes app, or oh, yeah, pictures work too. Yeah, it's just this one time because I decided to change the platform and I didn't account for stuff. Yada yada yada. Uh, I don't know why you're throwing shade my way. I I was good this week. This week. <laughs> yeah, he didn't make any issues. What are you talking about? What are you, what are you criticizing for? You should criticize me. All right, all right, all right. Move on. Deus Ex: Human Revolution mm, against. Sex. Oh, there it is. Dragon's Dogma Two. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and lock in now. Because I'm fairly certain I know. I'm trying to remember how well Dragon's Dogma 2 did. It did well, but it didn't like blow anybody out of the water. kind of feel like Days X did really well, though. All right, I'm going to lock in. I feel like right. we're going to differ here. Did you say you locked in, Phil? Yeah, he locked I in did. first. I did. All right. Phil, go on. You say Dragon's Dogma. I'm going Deus Ex. In fact, the winner of the point is Tavin. Yeah. yeah. Sitting at an 89. That feels right. Compared Dogma what, dude? Yeah, dra- Dogma 2 got an 88. So, very, very close. One single point is sometimes all it takes. And yet, Tavin, it seems, cheated beforehand, and here we are. <laughs> Dogma nuts. Mm-hmm. Bitch. Dogma nuts. Next game. The Outer Worlds. Me and Tavin played that. Or the Outer, Outer Wilds. <laughs> That'd be fun. We played a little bit of it. We didn't like play it that no, much. No, we did not. Yeah. Against Dragon Age Inquisition. 
Ooh. Well, I know what game it should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's tough. Yeah, I'm gonna lock in. It shouldn't it shouldn't be that tough. This one should be pretty easy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and lock in. Yeah, Kevin. Uh, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. Outer Worlds. Tevin with another point. Yep. Yeah. The 89 score wins out to the 85. I think my I think my knowledge of at least playing both games helps. A little bit helped there. Yeah. I haven't played either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. Outer Worlds was was cool. It was cool. Should have played more. We're getting another one. Mm-hmm. Don't know when, but we are. Some point. Some point. Got to get this avowed out the door. Mhm. Well, Tevin. Yeah. Please do not score any more points so Phil can win. <laughs> okay, great. I'll try my best. Yeah. But it's a, it's two to one right now, or three? No, he's got three. Three one. Yep. Yeah, three one. This is going to be between Dark Souls three. Okay. Against Diablo three, Ultimate Evil Edition. Oh, I'm that Ultimate in. Evil Edition. That was the one that went to consoles. Mm-hmm. People really liked it, but Dark Souls three, people really liked that game as mm-hmm. well. That's tough. That's Indeed tough. It is. Can I ask, are these ones separated by a point? Yeah. Oof. Yeah, they are. Oof. That's a coin flip if I've ever mm-hmm. fucking heard of one. I'm gonna lock in, but I don't I don't like it, Connor. I don't like it. Did you lock in first? first? I locked oh, in. Okay. Uh you might not go first. Me. But you go first. Well, I don't know. I said, you never listen to me. I said, I locked in. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. But yeah, go first, Phil. Dark Souls 3. I was also going Dark Souls 3. Unfortunately, both of you are wrong. Ah, it's Diablo. It's Diablo 3 by one point with a 90. Wow. Uh, uh, like, so only part of me was was going to say like, oh, is this is this Connor on his soap, soapbox? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this game is so much better than this Blizzard drivel um it is. but like i i also genuinely thought oh, that, like, great dark souls was going to be better than mm-hmm. i think they yeah. cater to different audiences they do and yeah. and I, I just i like i said connor is a dark souls fanboy and he hates blizzard so yeah it yep. wouldn't be a hot take to say diablo 3 is the best in the franchise no it's cons- is what mm. i is what i get i haven't played much of any of them really but yeah. that's what i would would have I've heard garnered that a lot. from from fans is that three was the best, maybe two, but I think three is usually considered the the better one. Beats my ass. Yeah. Uh, Dark Souls three did get an eighty nine. That one point difference there, though, of course, Phil, you are right. Usually, I would do this kind of matchup just to clown on Activision Blizzard in a way, uh, which I can still do because the user score, but talented for Diablo three is a seven point eight <laughs> against the. Dignified nine round number round from strong number. fans are so annoying. Dark Souls three, Dark Souls three, the best Dark Souls game. Also, I like how, I like how he was like fake straightening his tie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the, let me, from soft fans might be the most annoying Dignified. contingent of fans in video games. Uh, you can think of many more that are more annoying. Oh, okay. Well, he, he I put can think of ones that are annoying. Metal Gear ones there. are annoying. I'll, I'll take it on the chin. Metal more Gear annoying. is annoying. He, he, what? He put More the caveat annoying. in there saying in video games, otherwise I would have fucking mm-hmm. shot fucking him Star down. Wars fans need to get the fuck up out of here, man. Y'all yeah. fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, in video games, I think from software fans are the most annoying. It's just gatekeeping, you know. It's the gatekeeping. Oh yeah, I forgot. You guys are and they, they act bad. they act so high and mighty. Guys, we're just playing video games. It's video games. Enjoy yeah. what have you, you like. Have you been yet? No, I haven't played much. <laughs> you fucking loser! You can't beat him. <laughs> I barely played. The, I played the game once in this it, past week. You just don't have the skill, Connor. I don't have. You don't have it. I have the ability. You Trust don't have me, it. I do. You don't I have do. It. Yes, I do. Connor, we yes, should. I we do. should. We should try to co-op it. We shouldn't. Why? Because I, I I golden path it. I don't even know if that's the proper way to describe what I do, but I do no summons, and I just go go to town, and that's how I'm gonna win. You loser. don't even want to mm-hmm. unite with your friend and nope. defeat this great evil. The first time, nope. Nope. No, I, I get I get what he's saying. I mm-hmm. fuck with it. Yeah. Uh Tavin, you won. But let's see how things pew 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 pew. Calm your ass. Some Yosemite Sam. Yeah, Yosemite my ass. I'm gonna go with the cats next one. An yeah, they're cats. Final games. Persona 5 Royal. Okay. Against Divinity Original Sin 2. 
That one's tough. Oh, mm-hmm. easy. Easy peasy, huh? I don't think it's easy. <laughs> I'm locked in. <laughs> Damn. He's, he's, he's going off a of hype alone. Because <laughs> <laughs> one of these games definitely in. got more hype than the other. What's that? Film? Believe me, Tavin. It's easy. I'm locked in. Hmm. You're using the royal version? Yes. Okay, I'm locked in. Tavin, you go. I'm going to go Divinity Original Sin 2. Yeah, go. of course it's Divinity Original Sin 2. Cunt. <laughs> You're both wrong. It was what? Persona 5 Royal. <laughs> Eat my ass, bitch. <laughs> so Eat confident. my ass, you dumb motherfucker. So I, remember, I remember seeing Divinity Original Sin 2 was like one of the highest rated games on Metacritic for like yeah, a long so time. Yeah, so is Persona 5 Royal, bro. See, <laughs> as I said at the beginning of the show, I realized that what I was doing, it happened with Doom. Because I clicked on it, and for some reason, the default one that comes up is the Nintendo Switch version, which mm. sits at a 79. And then I looked yeah. it up, and it was like, like I said, the, you know, 87. I played it on X- Switch. Yeah. Very strange. It's not, it's not the best way to play that game. Yeah, exactly. So, since then, since to, starting for this game, I, like I said, go in and choose the highest rated version on whatever console, console is the highest. In this case, Persona 5 Royal, I think I, if the base score, I can't remember what it was. I think it was like a 93, but Persona 4, I mean, the PlayStation 4 version is 95. So, I think it's just, Why, that's what got gotcha. score. Like, Persona 5 Royal came out on PlayStation 4. Yeah, but I don't think the Metacritic like thing, when you search it in their you know database of games, the PS4 version comes up. I think it's like the PC version or some shit. No. I think. No. I'll have to check again. There's no way, because the PC version came out like last year. Uh, I mean, like I said, Doom on fucking Switch. It's kind of strange. Oh, oh, you're saying they could just use the mate, the mate, the 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 most recent version published. Yeah, they possibly you, could. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Uh, I'll I'll double check. But that's the game. Tavin, you win. Yeah, I just remember I just remember always seeing like Divinity Two, originally Divinity Original Sin Two, being like top three highest rated games on Metacritic. It yeah. might be like the Aside most from like Ocarina of Time. Yeah, you know? all the all the really old classics are gonna be up there. And... No, it's just 95 straight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, still very high. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, but it's hard to break that ninety-five. It is it getting higher and than the ninety-five. Five Royal was ninety-six. Uh, yes. No, 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 no. I thought Persona 95. was yeah nine-five, but what user score beat beat it out? Uh, no, that was a case of where the user score. I'd clicked on it. I'd clicked on you know Persona Five to see what the. So uh, what makes Persona Five higher? Yeah, the fact that it's a ninety-five against a ninety-three. You, okay. okay, you then just said Divinity had it. You just said Divinity was 95. Oh. Sometimes I want to strangle you. Hey, I mean, what's the difference between 93, 95? Just small two. Two points. Yeah. What? It's not a small difference? You're lucky I'm smart enough to center myself <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> Tavin, why would you say racial slurs on the internet? It wasn't going to be racial. <laughs> I, had, I had to cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, Tavin, you should be happy. You won. I did win by by a good amount. We'll see if that happens next time. I thought he was going to go Divinity just off the hype of layering studios from Baldur's Gate 3. Uh-huh. I'm like, that's not the reason why. I thought when he said hype, he was going Persona 5. I That's what I thought. Yeah. That's what I thought. But when he was like, oh, of course. I'm like, well, hold on. Like, layering was always good, but they weren't like the best in the world. Mm-hmm. All no, the time. I, I was going off of what I what I had seen previously when I was just like nerdy and going through all the different scores and stuff and like gotcha, what's gotcha, highest gotcha, rated. Gotcha. I just remember that one being up up high up there, but you know. This, anyway, this uh, moving right yeah. along. Congratulations, Tavin. Uh, you've defeated me. I was off my game this week. Um, we are about an Thank hour you, into this podcast. You, would you like to do your thing, or do you want to? Yeah, I think we just do one. Okay. Just yeah. one. Uh, so I believe you wanted to add to our uh, ga- game dev ranking. Yeah. Mounting list. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, run us through it. I love lists. I love rankings. And we're, we're in the process of slowly but surely ranking game dev studios purely based off of conversation and no real accurate uh, uh, meter. But it's a conversation where we weigh out all of the sliders, you know, mm. the, the quality of game, the impact, the, the longevity of the studio and, and how often they can put out banger titles um, and, and all of these things. Uh, so currently there are eight entries on the list. We have at number eight 
Pokemon Company. Number seven, Bioware. Number six, Insomniac. Number five, Santa Monica. Number four, Capcom Division One. That's Resident Evil, DMC, and Dead Rising. Number three, Bungie. Number two, From Software. Number one, Naughty Dog. Gentlemen, I'll let y'all decide which one we want to enter into the list today. Uh, I have for you to pick Kojima Productions, 343 Industries, and id software hmm i think kojima let's do that phil i'm down for that let's do it i haven't really played that many kojima games but kojima when you've played three of them no not not like by then there was it was konami it wasn't strictly kojima you know is kojima productions published by konami oh, oh okay. published and no, owned by Ko- I'm, I'm including the entire both iterations of kojima productions both being okay the the yeah the, under the konami branch and where they are today with death stranding and and whatever else the hell they're doing uh so let's talk about kojima productions real quick yeah i think obviously impact influence is there both the version with high. the little foxhound logo and yeah. the uh the, the weird spartan night head. the yeah the 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 space and spartan not helmet thing that they got going on now yeah uh i think influence is mad high i think in, in, like impact is mad high uh you know they're really good at telling narratives i think uh they're good at nailing a core gameplay loop it's not always the best gameplay loop in the world but it's really fun and inter- and entertaining especially when you get uh into mgs2 mgs3 i think uh, i say, I say they do a really good job of like nailing that loop down yeah like for sure uh, yeah i definitely think when you get to like phantom pain era they they really are like some of the best third-person action games Mm -hmm. in the world um but you know there's a couple of shortcomings and depending on where you want to take it there the stories do get Mm kind of crazy kojima does kind of lead uh uh, the team down weird paths that can be controversial uh metal gear solid 4 i think is not one of the greatest games ever made um still good but not great five petered out after like a while it was really big talked about at the time but it's staying power but five also petered out because of outside reasons, like you know, that's an incomplete game. Now, again, it, again, I do think Phantom Pain both counts for them and against them because it's not the best game ever made, um, and so it, it goes on their resume as not the best game ever made. But what's there is really fucking good, um, but it's incomplete. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but you know, you can. I feel like the negative points they would earn off of that. Uh, get discounted they don't they don't lose so many points because clearly konami was being konami i don't think it really changes their score at all it's like a you know oh it net zero factor. yeah net zero oh, i think okay. overall all right you know when you're comparing it to other games i'm not mad at companies. that i'm not mad at that mm-hmm. um I think we bad yeah i get you yeah yeah i think five and four overall are ones that don't really place it help place it above other games on the list but metal gear solid one heavily does due to yes. what it did historically for games you know, three due to quality alone as well. Two as well for being able to be so divisive at the time, and then on the very merits of your game, turn around as you know people aged, actually sit on aged it. like a fine wine. One yeah. of the best aging games of all mm-hmm. time, for yeah, sure. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And then Death Stranding, which is unique, I think gives it points, but it's certainly not as substantial. No, as d- you're Gears. definitely like is the lesser amount of points yeah. on the scale. You know? But it's still getting it. I, I, I agree. I think it ga- I think you gain points from Death Stranding. Uh, Phil, <clears throat> where where Sorry? are you at? I know I know you know you've got you've got an opinion based off of what you saw on the internet and stuff. Well I mean I, I don't like really necessarily stand by that opinion mm-hmm. because because like I like you said it's not yeah. formed from my own like experience. Mm. Um so I don't really, I don't really think I could weigh in that much in terms of Death Stranding. I know, like from what I have seen, it doesn't look like it would be for me. Mm. Um, but who knows? Who knows what what it'll be like when inevitably Tavin chooses that for us, and I have to finally put my hands on sticks uh, on that game. It'll happen. Uh, someday. Maybe I'll love it. Who knows? Maybe, maybe. Um. So yeah, read out the list again. Yeah, so let, let let's get into the list here. We got eight Pokemon Company, seven Bioware, six Insomniac, five Santa Monica, four Capcom Division One, three Bungie, two From Software, one Naughty Dog. I think based off where we have the list, it goes over Bungie. Wow. Okay. Just because historically, historically, it's done what so much Bungie? for versus Halo. Ah. <sighs> What, what Vers- number is Bungie? Bungie is three. Yeah. 
No, I would put it right under, I think. See, I think I think at Santa Monica at five, I think they definitely go over Santa Monica. Yeah. You got a war twenty eighteen. If they had more games like in Ragnarok yeah. of that quality and three Eh, well, they got a lot of good games, but not a good comparison. Uh, yeah, God of War is consistently yeah. a great franchise, but I don't think those first three games are as impactful as anything Metal Gear ever does. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and I just think pound for pound, Metal Gear games are aging better. They're more fun to play, in my opinion, and uh, I just think they're overall better games. Mm. Um, Cap- Capcom, then- Capcom gets interesting, right? Yeah. You kind of won me all, like 343. Three, I didn't contextualize Halo at the time. Uh, Bungie. Bungie. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Same thing. Not See, sure. but I think Capcom gets interesting because I think just as much influence, just as much impact, yeah. ju- you know, uh, but a wider range of quality here. You know, there are some stinkers in that, in that list, but the ones that aren't stinkers are fucking good. Yeah. <sighs> the thing about Capcom is they have, a more because they do have the stinkers which holds it back yeah uh but they have a more diverse catalog you I know agree. at the end of the day kojima you're getting a lot of the same type of games death stranding broke the mold the most but metal gear solid one through five it kind of follows a certain trend it builds up on itself yeah, which is a quality to be, i think one to through be three and even peace walker uh build up on on themselves i think uh, four and five kind of break out and try to be a little bit more m- for what was at the time modern third person action games. From from what I, you obviously played for, so you would know more. It yeah. seems like that was more of a they adapted to Metal Gear as people understood it in the modern sense because it seems like it still is structured a very similar way. And when you move through levels, it's similar. Whereas Metal Gear Solid Five, you're you're just in an open world setting. You move differently, and the game functions just absolutely differently. Whereas 4 at least has that traditional mission, you know, sequencing. I think yeah, I'm going to disagree with that mm-hmm. idea because um, 4 is more based around you're going through a level. Yeah. And then you move on to the next level. Now you're going through this level. And each level kind of has its own gimmicks mm-hmm. type thing. Um, whereas uh, Metal Gear traditional... It traditionally is more structured room to room type mm-hmm. thing um but doesn't that kind of get a bit different when you go into three which that kind of does more what four does i mean you stay in an area sometimes a lot more than others but you eventually move on as well even there's a lot a less but there's just a lot less breaking up of environments in four yeah there's a lot less mm-hmm. of it the 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 arenas are much larger much longer mm-hmm. um and you're doing different things in them there's there's not as much stealth in four there's there it is there um but you know i think a lot of players are gonna pick up a gun and start shooting motherfuckers okay um in it so like it plays a little bit more like an action game um where phantom pain plays a little bit more like a stealth sim um with your point of like it is open Mm world-esque um and you know your your open zone yeah open and and, then i mean it's open world but you don't engage with the open world like you would with open worlds um mm. it's special it's weird i <laughs> yeah I, yeah um so yeah i uh, i yeah it's tricky i i like your point of the diversification diversification of catalog under capcom you know resident evil devil may cry devil may cry street dead fighter Ri- dead rising uh i don't can think I, street fighter a, street fighter's not question included in that ranking. about yeah mgs5 is uh-huh. it not is it not is it not like before you like go on your mission, do you not like choose like an area that that mission is in, and you the, not all the areas are connected? Right? So, so I don't I wouldn't call that open world. So there are two big maps in Phantom Pain um, mm-hmm. that are disconnected from each other, but the maps are the size of any open world map you would find in other games. And when you load into a mission, you can go anywhere in that map, but the mission zone is focused on this one area. And then when you complete your mission, you don't have to leave back to Mother Base. You can stay in the open world and fuck around. Um, mm. The thing is, is that it's a very empty open world, and you're not going to be doing a lot of running around, fucking around in it. Um, outside gotcha. of that's, that's gaining why resources, I was mo- and, more saying and, open zone because that reminds me more of like what um, Sonic, uh, so- the one that came out a couple years ago, Frontiers. Frontiers, yeah, yeah. that's what it reminds me of. Hmm. Um. 
yeah, I would lean. I would lean away from that. I, the best way I would I would describe it is, um, Metal Gear Solid Five is a open world game, but it's not very good at engaging with its open world. <laughs> like, gotcha. Um, but there are you know there's but there's reasons to engage with it outside of yeah. But like you're there for taking on missions and things like that, because that's where the fun of the stealth gameplay shines. So you said earlier Street Fighter isn't included in the Yeah, it's ranking? a different division. Uh, Street Fighter team is a different Capcom team. So what you what was it called on the list though? Just Capcom? I don't I don't I don't know what that team is called. Our our list is Capcom Division 1. They division do one. Resident Evil, Devil May Cry and Dead Rising. Okay, Division 1. I think in terms of I I think ultimately the biggest, you know, benefit Metal Gear has is the impact it had. But when you're comparing it to something like Resident Evil, which also has major impact, yeah. plus those games you just said, Devil May Cry. I think DMC has right. major impact as yeah, well. Yeah, it does. So I think for those reasons, I'm going to put it just behind Capcom. And Capcom is currently number what? Five? Four. four, four. Number four. Yeah. Okay. I like I, That's kind of where I was leaning, is I was leaning to put Kojima anywhere between like four and five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I just think it goes above Santa Monica. Capcom is a is a conversation we can have that conversation, but I I, I tend to lean to where the diversification of the catalog. Uh, they have just as many highs gameplay wise. They got a lot of lows, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, DMC and Resident Evil were not always great games. DMC I think was someone different as well. Ninja Theory, no, not Ninja Theory. Uh, <laughs> the bad the bad DMC you're yeah. talking about, but also DMC two. Yeah, DMC two. Yeah, uh, and then DMC. No, yeah, DMC two. That was it. You know, and then you look at Resident Evil six, Resident Evil five, Asterix, because we love that game. I think that's a game that, similar to Metal Gear Solid two, not to the same degree, is one that people can play and have more fun with than they did back in the day. I, I think, yeah, I think because expectations were reset, yeah, over time that you look back on that game with more fondness, and it's treated like a co op game, not a single player action game, yeah. like. Resident Evil 4. I think Resident Evil 4 set the bar too high. It did. Um, and it was just never attainable. So I'm with that. Let's put uh, let's put Kojima Productions at the new number 5. Sexy. Above Santa Monica. Uh, below Capcom Division 1. Sexy. Yeah. I like that. I like it. There we go. So the final list is number 9, Pokemon Company. Number 8, Bioware. Number 7, Insomniac. Number 6, Santa Monica Studios. Number 5, Kojima Productions. Number 4, Capcom Division 1. Number 3, Bungie. Number 2, From Software. And number 1, Naughty Dog. I can't believe we got you to put Naughty Dog above From Software. You agreed to it. Yeah, just because of the older catalog. I forgot. I was this whole time, like, I know you've read the, the placements a couple times, but this whole time I was like... Yeah, FromSoft being a number one makes make sense, but then you said Naughty Dog was a number one. I was like, all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They could be switched easy. Like, again, there's it, arguments it interchanged. Made. There's, yeah, I think, yeah, I think there's... What are you looking for in your video games is, yeah. is the big question there. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. that split, like, it's like, all right, you can flip them any way you want, really. Naughty Dog, going back to it, has the narrative side of things and with their older games, the gameplay-focused side of things, which I think, you know, still thinking about it, just gives it... And also, yeah, pre pre kind of... Dark Souls, From Soft is not hot shit. Yeah, and they got a lot of games pre Dark Souls. You Do think? naughty dog. Yeah, yeah, man, Armored Core's got like four, uh, they got Core, like yeah, four yeah. they got like four Armored Core games and some other shit, mm. you know, under their belt. And Demon Souls, good but not phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, that was the reason I think at the time we put it over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, there's the list for now. I think, I think. Well, mm? I don't know. It's just hard because we haven't had. A lot of Naughty Dog games in the modern era, but that's all you know. I would argue, de- definitely caliber and uh, the the pace that they put out games. I like FromSoft better than Naughty Dog today. Definitely, yeah, yeah. But that could change. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it that's won't. Good. All right. But well, I think that's a wrap for this episode of the Piggy Bank. Um, Piggy Bank. Stay tuned uh, on stream for the boys. Uh, gonna they're gonna record their episode of the Two Penny Games Cast, talking about the news. Um, but of course, boys, thank you for joining me on this lovely episode of our Casual Podcast. And you viewer, make sure to check out all of our links in the description below and uh, let us know what your favorite game dev is, uh, what your favorite f- uh, Pokemon game is, and what old one should be remade. Uh, and you know, do you really think that some of those meta scores are correct, or do you think some of the games are a little overrated? Let us know. 
Uh, and of course, we'll catch you in the next one. Boys, let's go ahead and say goodbye. Goodbye. See you guys.